Now on Fast Track News, Purdue men's basketball advances to the Final Four in Phoenix. We ask fans how far they think the Boilermakers will go. Plus, the Purdue Student Union Board hosted a block party to celebrate Trans Day of Visibility. What events were students able to take part in? And it's Ag Week. Did you get your free burger on Memorial Mall? We'll show you what activities and freebies were available for students and what they were able to learn. All your campus news, weather, and sports is straight ahead. This is Fast Track News. Happy Friday, Boilermakers. I'm Jillian Huckleberry. And I'm Alex Kuban. It's Friday, April 5th. Here's a look at your campus news for the week. First, Purdue has advanced its way into the Final Four during the March Madness Tournament. Fast Track was there in Detroit for the game that punched our ticket. And we were there when the Boilers returned home to thousands of fans. Reporter Yumi Colombo shows us all of the excitement. Forty-four years. That's how long it's been since Purdue last went to the Final Four. That is, until now. After the Boilermakers beat the Volunteers last weekend in the Elite Eight, fans waited for the team's arrival at the Purdue airport Sunday night. Some shared that they had been there for an hour before the team returned to campus. Was this an unexpected win? How long had Boilermaker fans been waiting for this moment? We asked fans if they were surprised Purdue made it this far. We really had our fingers crossed and hoped. I mean, I believed in them, and they believed in themselves too, obviously, so they got here. The fans' belief in the team doesn't stop there. The Boilermaker pride was all around at the airport as fans sang and cheered. As the team walked by, we were able to ask fans just how far they thought Purdue would go. Did fans' faith in the team stop at the Final Four? Or did they think the Boilermakers would go and win it all? Purdue all the way. <laughs> no question. It's Purdue, and, right? Boiler up. And boiler up. Fans are hopeful that this is the year for the Boilermakers. The madness continues in Phoenix on Saturday, where Purdue will be playing NC State and fighting to get a spot in the championship. I can't wait for the game on Saturday, but Yumi, where can Boilermakers view the game on campus? Yeah, great question. So there are two locations. You can either go to watch parties located at the Purdue Memorial Union or in Mackey Arena. Students can watch from the front lawn or the East Terrace at the PMU or join students in Mackey. So for the watch party in Mackey, that requires a student ID and a ticket for entry, and they are limited for now. Uh, they will be claimed by 4 p.m. on Saturday. Well, if you, needed a view, if you needed a way to view the game, it sounds like there are a couple great opportunities on campus to watch the Boilermakers take on the Wolfpack tomorrow evening. Big news for Purdue and the city of West Lafayette. On Wednesday, the university celebrated a remarkable achievement as SK Hynix Incorporated, a global semiconductor giant, announced plans to build a cutting-edge manufacturing facility at Purdue Research Park. This partnership marks a significant step forward in bolstering Indiana's semiconductor industry. Our reporter Joyce Duan has the story. Anticipation is high for a significant economic announcement that happened this past Wednesday, with key figures including Governor Eric Holcomb, Senator Ta Young, Purdue President Meng Chang, and Purdue former President Mitch Daniels in attendance. In this momentous event held at PMU, it was revealed that SK Hynix Incorporated, the world's sixth largest semiconductor company, will be establishing a semiconductor facility right here at Purdue Research Park. With initial investment nearing $4 billion, this facility is poised to become a hub for developing cutting-edge technologies particularly in advanced packaging for high bandwidth memory chips used in artificial intelligence applications, a sector where SK Hynix is at the forefront. What makes today's announcement even more significant is the collaborative effort behind it. Leaders from federal, states, and the local governments have joined forces with Purdue University to make this vision a reality. As the largest technology facility, at any university in America, this will bring many benefits and opportunities to our students, faculty, neighbors, and partners. And at the same time, we will be contributing both talent and innovation towards economic growth and prosperity. The new facility, set to be constructed on 90 acres at Purdue Research Park, will focus on the mass production of next-generation HBM chips and the development of future semiconductor technologies. We believe that this project will lay the foundation for a new silicon heartland, a semiconductor ecosystem centered right here 
in the Midwest Triangle. Reporting for Fast Track News, I'm Joyce Dwin. Stay tuned as we explore the transformative collaboration between Purdue University and SK Hynix Incorporated, poised to redefine the trajectory of semiconductor innovation. The weather has been all over the place lately. Let's see where students can prepare for in the coming week. Meteorologist Maria Vauder is here with a first look at the forecast. Good morning, West Lafayette. Well, today we're looking at um, a pretty chilly day, very similar to what we've seen on Thursday and Wednesday, except not as much precipitation. Um, we're looking at a high of 46 today with a low of 35 um, and a breeze um, around 9 to 13 miles per hour. So breaking it down hour by hour for today around 10 a.m., we're at 38 degrees um, into the noon hour. We're at 41, and that'll increase a little bit more as we head into the afternoon with 44 degrees at 3 p.m. and 45 at 6 p.m. And while we're going to see some um, clearer um, skies today and Saturday, um, we are looking at some rain showers coming um, into Sunday and early next week, and we'll cover that in more detail in my full forecast. We are just days away now from the Great American Solar Eclipse. This total solar eclipse will be seen in 15 states, including Indiana, while 49 states will see a partial eclipse. A total solar eclipse is where those in the center of the moon's shadow, when it hits the Earth, will see the sky darken as if, as if it were dawn or dusk. Here in West Lafayette, we're close, but not quite, in totality. 99.5% to be exact. So we'll still, we'll still get a show, that is, if the weather cooperates. WLFI Chief Meteorologist and Purdue Guest Lecturer Chad Evans is watching the cloud cover potential, which could impact what Monday's eclipse will look like. A good thing to note is, let's say it's partly to mostly cloudy. Even with cloudiness around, the sky is definitely going to get darker. So, yes, it's much more dramatic when it's a sunny, clear day. But even with a partly to mostly cloudy sky, you will notice a distinct change in the light that you have outside. Purdue will hold events both on campus and at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Tune in to see our special live broadcast of the Eclipse right here on the Purdue Channel next Monday. Coverage begins at 1.45, just before the partial eclipse begins. Purdue alum and C-SPAN founder Brian Lamb paid a visit to campus this week. Tuesday night in Fowler Hall, the namesake of the Lamb School of Communication, hosted his annual conversation interview series as a part of the Center for C-SPAN Scholarship and Engagement at Purdue. His guest was Pulitzer Prize winning author Stacey Schiff. Schiff is known for her biographies of historical figures like Cleopatra and Samuel Adams. Reporter Samuel Ruse sat down with Schiff to discuss her books and asked her why she writes biographies. But I think at a certain point you develop an obsession with a person or you develop an obsession with a moment and you realize that this person is the way to, to speak to that moment in some way. Schiff has written a total of five books, the latest of which, Franklin, was adapted into an Apple TV Plus show, the first three episodes of which will air on April 12th, one week from today. Schiff plans to revisit Benjamin Franklin in her next biographical work. Easter weekend was beautiful, and it set the scene for good happenings at Stewart Center this past Saturday. The Purdue Student Union Board, the LGBTQ Center, and the Queer Student Alliance collaborated to celebrate Trans Day of Visibility. The LGBTQ Center and QSA hosted a block party in the center from 4 to 8 p.m. The drag show took place from 6 to 8 p.m. People enjoyed crafts, food, and, co and company during the block party, and performances by three drag queens at the drag show. This was the first time P-Sub hosted a drag show, but it was a team effort, one that paid off well. Olivia Troy, the P-Sub director for the event, noted that it was an overwhelmingly positive experience for not only the attendance, but P-Sub as well. First, but I was just like so taken away by like the craft of it all um, and like feeding off the audience and just like seeing like, okay, like, yeah, like people really enjoyed the event. So I think it's something that Purdue like definitely needed. Besides BoilerCon this weekend, students can expect another collaboration between PSUB and the LGBTQ Center, Second Chance Prom on April 27th. Keep an eye on their Instagrams as well as the QSAs for updates and event information. National Medal of Science winner Gabisa Ejeda received the Order of Griffin, Purdue's highest honor award from President Meng Sheng on Monday. The Order of Griffin is a prestigious award to honor members of the university who have gone above and beyond their commitment to Purdue. 
Ijeda is a Presidential Fellow for Food Security and Sustainable Global Development and a Distinguished Professor in Agronomy. He is receiving the award for his years of dedication to end global food insecurity. Ijeda is from rural community in West Central Ethiopia and came to Purdue to earn his master's degree and PhD in plant breeding and genetics. President Sheng says Ijeda's story is one of perseverance and resilience and that he stands as a role model for all Boilermakers. Congratulations, Professor Ijeda. Exciting events keep rolling in on campus as Purdue student government kicked off their presidential elections this week. Voting ran Monday through Thursday. Last week, there was a debate where candidates were able to share their plans for improving student life on campus. Students were also able to submit questions to participate in a Q&A with the candidates. As far as we're concerned, we're coming in there fresh, guns blazing. I mean, think where PSG and us as students come in is to really advocate for the student voice. From my experience, the first thing you have to do is get the conversation started. Keep a lookout for more updates on our Instagram at Purdue Fast Track News and the PSG Instagram at Purdue Student Government. Up next, a look at the events for Ag Week this year. And still to come, our question of the week. What are your fellow Boilermakers game day superstitions? Don't go away, Fast Track will be right back. You know, Alex, I swear I heard a few moose coming from Memorial Mall on Monday. That's right, Jillian. There was, in fact, a cow or two grazing through campus. Purdue had its annual Ag Week this week, wrapping up with Farm to Fork Friday today. I heard it was even raining burgers on Wednesday. Reporter Brianna Mendez has the story. Ag Week, a Purdue tradition originating in 2012, has evolved since its inception. Behind the scenes, a dedicated team of over 20 members worked tirelessly to devise innovative ways to highlight the importance of agriculture. In initiatives such as Milk Monday and Burger Bash has successfully attracted crowds to Memorial Mall for years. Students not only get lots of free food and merch, Ag Week also connects them with industry professionals for an opportunity to learn, network, and have fun. Recruitment and Tech Tuesday Chair Sammy Whitsney had this to say about Ag Week just kind of be the life of agriculture, Purdue agriculture out here on Memorial Mall. And then for today, um, I think we've got eight or nine different companies talking about what they bring to the uh, ag technology world um, and how they play their part in it. Burger Bash was so popular this year that they began giving out burgers 30 minutes early to try and combat the line forming. Purdue students did not let the rain stop them from getting their free food. Rain was coming down, but the umbrellas went up and Boilermakers continue to have a good time. Purdue Ag Week also partnered with Pack Away Hunger on Thursday for Hammer Down Hunger, where they aim to pack 65,000 meals to help combat food insecurity. This just goes to show all the different ways that agriculture industry at, here at Purdue is working within our community. Reporting for Fast Track News, I'm Brianna Mendez. Rain or shine, Boilermakers will find their way to free food, especially when it comes with little trinkets. Can't forget the little trinkets. Hopefully the weather gets a little better this weekend, though. Let's see what our meteorologist, Maria Vodder, has to say. Coming up, we're going to be looking at the rain showers that we'll see Sunday and into next week, as well as the wind that's going to come with that, um, as well as what you should expect as you plan for tomorrow's game and the eclipse on Monday. Welcome to Fast Track News. Good morning for those of you just tuning in. We're looking at a pretty chilly day today with a high of 46 and a low of 35 degrees. Um, no precipitation like we've seen the last couple of days, but still a lot of cloud coverage. 
Um, and as we break it down hour by hour today, at 10 a.m. we're at 38 degrees, at noon 41 degrees, and into the afternoon we're looking at, um, at the mid 40s. Um, heading into tomorrow, Saturday, um, for the big Final Four game, um, at 6 a.m. we're looking at 30 degrees, 9 a.m. 33 degrees, at the noonday hour um, 44 degrees, and then we're looking at the low 50s into the afternoon. So while we won't be getting um, much rain um, today and we'll be looking at some sunny skies tomorrow, Sunday and into next week we are looking at some a.m. showers and um, just scattered showers throughout the day, so watch out for that um, and be prepared. Um, along with that, we're looking at some pretty high gusts, um, wind gusts um, um, on Monday and Sunday. Um, and then on Monday, we have the eclipse coming. Um, we're right in the area of some, some pretty uh, full coverage. I um, mean, what should we expect weather-wise with that eclipse? Well, we're looking at some slightly lower temperatures as the sun is covered, um, along with some decreased wind speeds as the temperature, um, the air rising from the ground um, cools, and then as well as some decreased cl cloud coverage. Um, and looking at our full seven day forecast, Friday, as I've said, we're looking at a pretty chilly day with our high of 46. Saturday, we get some sun with a high of 53. Um, and then Sunday and Monday, we are looking at some potential showers as well as into the rest of the week, but we are looking at some higher temperatures as well, getting into the um, very high 60s, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So it should be pretty good weather for the game on Saturday and also for the eclipse on Monday. Just ahead, the 44-year drought is over. The Boilermakers are headed to the Final Four. Plus, we'll recap the Purdue women's basketball season. All that and more just ahead. I'm Sebastian Lux. Don't go anywhere. Sports is next. From the heathens, got will, got fight, got pride, got reason. If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them. If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon. I got drive, got sight, always have a vision. I don't buy at night, I be in my feelings. I'ma be fine, need time, and I'll soon be winning. I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens, got will, got the Purdue Boilermakers are off to Phoenix. For the first time since 1980, Purdue is in the Final Four. But how did the Boilermakers break their 44-year drought? Well, it all went down in an exciting weekend in Detroit. Purdue Fast Track sports reporter Jimmy Sobeski has the story. Purdue started a historic weekend in a familiar place. For the fifth time in seven years, Purdue was playing in a Sweet 16 game. Purdue faced off against the fifth seeding Gonzaga Bulldogs, who were playing in their ninth straight Sweet 16. Despite the fact that it was a neutral game, Little Caesars Arena felt Mackey-ish with an overwhelming Purdue crowd. Gonzaga started out shooting and rebounding well, and they got out to an early 20-17 lead, but three three-pointers from Purdue forced a Gonzaga timeout. The two teams played even for the rest of the half, and Purdue would hold a four-point halftime lead. Purdue would start off the second half hot, forcing another Gonzaga timeout. After the good start, Purdue would stretch it to a 17-point advantage at one point, and then cruised to a 12-point victory. Zach E. was a star with 27 points and 14 rebounds, propelling the Boilers to its first Elite Eight appearance in five years. On Sunday, Purdue took the court in Detroit with a chance to get to the Final Four for the first time in 44 years. Their opponent was a familiar one, 
the Tennessee Volunteers. Many people remember the instant classic that these two played in five years ago in the Sweet 16, but Purdue also defeated the Vols earlier this year in the Maui Invitational Tournament. For Tennessee, they were trying to reach their first Final Four in program history. We caught up with some Purdue fans before the game to see what they thought about the matchup. The whole team's kind of been hot as of late, but who do you think is going to have the big game today for Purdue? I don't know. That's a tough call. I mean, Zach Eady obviously is coming in through for us. Zach Eady effect. Zach Eady effect right here. <laughs> um, but we have a great team. Like, all the players, like, step in when they need to, especially, you know, if Zach Eady fouls out, then, like, or, you know, fouls and they take him out. You know, the other players step up. So I'm happy to see all the players play today. It was a back-and-forth affair with both of the stars showing out. Both Zach Eady and Tennessee All-American Dalton Connect had 10 points in the first 10 minutes of the game. Tennessee had the first big blow of the game when a 10-0 run gave them a 32-21 lead, which led to a Purdue timeout. Purdue would answer with a 13 run of their own, take the lead, and eventually a 36-34 halftime lead. At the break, Zach Eady had 19 points and Dalton Connect had 18. Nobody was able to control the game in the second half, as Purdue had an 8-point lead at one point, but it was immediately countered by a run from Tennessee, which would tie the game at 58. A huge three-pointer from Lance Jones would stretch the lead to six, followed by a clutch block from Zach Eady on Dalton Connect to seal the victory. The final score was 72-66. to Despite 37 points from Connect, it would not be enough for Tennessee, and a career-high 40 points from Zach Eady would lead Purdue to a trip to the desert. Reporting from Pass Track Sports, I'm Jimmy Sebeski. The Cinderella of the tournament in NC State on Saturday, and if they win, it'll be a trip to the championship game on Monday against either UConn or Alabama. Here's Fast Track's resident statistic major Alex Kuban with a closer look at how Purdue's matchups break down in the Final Four. Purdue takes on NC State in that semifinal Saturday at 6 p.m. What are some things to keep an eye on in that matchup? First, NC State plays a seven-man rotation, with the Wolfpack only relying on seven players what could happen if they get into foul trouble while trying to guard Zach Eady? Also, how will Purdue attempt to guard NC State big man DJ Burns? Many teams have tried doubling Burns on NC State's run, and he's made them pay, dishing out great passes to shooters. I expect Purdue to put Trey Kaufman Wren on Burns so Eady can keep NC State's Mohamed Diara off the offensive glass. Diara has been averaging double digit rebounds per game during NC State's nine game winning streak. If Purdue were to win, they would take on an offensive juggernaut either way. Both UConn and Alabama run incredibly efficient offenses. However, UConn, the expected winner of the matchup, has also been playing terrific defense all year. UConn is certainly on a dominant run, winning their last 10 NCAA tournament games by double digits. Either way, it'll be a fun weekend to cheer on Purdue. Back to you, Sebastian. Thanks, Alex. Purdue women's basketball took a loss to Vermont on Monday, 67-59 in the fourth round of the WNIT, which unfortunately ends their season. The Lady Boilermakers finished with a 15-19 record after finishing 11th in the Big Ten. The team will lose their top three scorers, Abby Ellis, Caitlin Harper, and Madison Layden, but are excited to welcome four-star point guard out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, Jordan Poole, who is ranked 55th in the incoming class. They will also welcome Kendall Perrier, who is the number two player out of Missouri, according to Prep Girls Hoops, as well as Lana McCarthy, who is ranked the number one player out of New Hampshire by Max Preps. Purdue Volleyball has canceled their upcoming game against the Wisconsin Badgers. The cancellation was announced in a Facebook post from the official Purdue Volleyball account this past Tuesday. Wisconsin Athletics attributed the cancellation to, quote, unforeseen circumstances with Purdue Athletics, end quote. The announcement was made following the win over Tennessee in the Elite Eight round of March Madness for Purdue men's basketball. The next round of the men's tournament takes place the same night the volleyball game against the Badgers was originally scheduled for. The Purdue baseball game that was supposed to take place Wednesday against Valparaiso was postponed, and the new date is to be announced. The Boilermakers will travel to Piscataway, New Jersey this weekend to take on the 19-9 Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They will play today at 6 p.m., tomorrow at 3 p.m., and Sunday at 1 p.m. in their first trip to Jersey since 2019. The games will be available on WSHY 104.3 FM. Purdue is currently ninth in the Big Ten standings, but will have the opportunity to pass Rutgers in the standings this weekend. Purdue's Jordan Ursepka won All-American honors this week by placing fourth at the NCAA Platform Diving Championship. 
Urstepka placed fourth out of 45 divers, and his performance helped Purdue place 23rd overall, the 15th time since 2005. Additionally, Holden Higby finished fourth in the consolation final and 12th overall, earning himself honorable mention All-American honors. On another note, Grand Prix week is approaching soon. The race will take place on April 20th and qualifications for the race will take place about a week before. Student-run residence halls, co-ops, and Greek organizations will be putting forth their carts to see who will be crowned the champion of the 2024 Grand Prix race. Additionally, students across campus will undoubtedly be in attendance for the race and will be celebrating race week through parties and gatherings. Here at Fast Track, we wish the best of luck to the Boilermakers in Phoenix this weekend. That's a wrap for sports, but stay tuned. Fast Track will be right back after this quick timeout. Hola from Spain. Good day, mates. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Hello from South Korea. I'm studying abroad in Valencia, Spain this semester. I'm studying abroad in Sydney, Australia. I'm studying abroad in Madrid, Spain. I'm studying at Seoul National University. At Isai Supero in Toulouse, France. And I'm really getting to enjoy meeting all the new people and the culture. How different it is from Purdue University. It is an absolutely fantastic experience. I'm living my best life. I can't wait to see you guys all overseas soon. A bientôt. Adios. Nos vemos en España. Now it's time for our question of the week. With the Boilers in the final four, some aren't taking any chances with Lady Luck. So we wanted to know, what superstitions do Boilermaker fans have? Reporter Ellie Acra got some interesting answers. So do you have any superstitions when watching Purdue that you have to do a certain thing or watch at a certain place or anything like that? Right now, probably not really, but um, I did believe the April Fools was just kind of embarrassing about Zach Eady and the ankle sprain or whatever it was. No, but my mom texted me and she said she uh, had a dream that Zach Eady grew his hair out. <laughs> so what superstitions do you have when watching Purdue play? Yeah, I mean, anytime the uh, marching band plays the fight song, I got to sing it all the way through, both verses. You sing all the words? Yep, all of them. I know them all. I wear the same shirt every time they play. What shirt is it? Um, it's the gray Purdue hoodie, just says Purdue across the front. My girlfriend has a candle. It's, uh, it's called Smells Like a Boilermaker Win, and the three times that she lit it, uh, we lost, so we don't light that candle anymore. I sit in the same seat, in the same shirt, in the same undershirt every night or every day for every game. Same and spot. where's it at? Is it in it's your... at one of my friend's house, not so the bars or anything. Yep, I have to go to their house. I have to sit in the exact spot on the couch. <laughs> and do you wash the shirt? <laughs> I have washed the shirt. I'm not that bad. I do wash the shirt. I do wash the shirt. Alex, do you have any superstitions when watching Purdue? I feel like if I ever turn the game off, we're going to start losing. So I have to be watching the whole time. How about you? All the superstitions come out on game day. It's a big deal in my house, and I'm known for rooting for the team that ends up losing. So I actually do not watch until the last 10 seconds, so I can't jinx us. <laughs> Here's Maria Vodder with one last look at the weather. All right, so one last look at our seven-day forecast here. Friday, we're looking at a high of 46 and a low of 35. Heading into Saturday, we're going to be getting some sun, which is awesome for the game, with a high of 53 degrees and a low of 37. Um, Sunday and Monday, we're starting to get a little cloudier with some potential showers here and there. Um, but on Sunday, we're looking at a high of 53, a low of 37. Monday, our high is 69. Um, and that is going to continue into the rest of the week. So get out there and enjoy the weather on Saturday and on Sunday as we have some pretty good um, big events coming up. Um, this is Maria Vodder, Fast Track News. Hey Boilermakers, be sure to check us out at Purdue Fast Track News on Instagram. We post campus news, sports, weather updates, and more. If you like posts like this one, be sure to leave a like, comment, and follow us. Be like this guy and interact with us at Purdue Fast Track News. We would love to hear from you and feature what matters to Boilermakers. And that's a wrap for Fast Track News. Thanks for watching and make sure you tune in next week.